Небольшое, такой небольшой комментарий. So first, a brief comment. I represent the University of uh, the uh, Moscow State University as well as uh, the High School of Economics and uh, the challenges of teaching English in the non-specialized departments are very important for me too. So my uh, presentation will deal on uh, the new challenges in uh, teaching foreign languages at tertiary level, new tendencies. And uh, I hope you will agree with me when we sp speak about the tertiary level. Uh, best compared uh, our methodology to the secondary education, I can say that we have a system, we are part of the system. and. Uh, it was Mr. Boris Lapidus who seriously dealt with the problem of methodology of teaching English at the tertiary level. And when we look at the objective issues that serve, that form the foundation of this situation, then we can see that the foreign language is not an obligatory subject for tertiary education at all levels. Therefore, uh, that was not an incentive for us because uh, uh, the uh, foreign language was not an obligatory subject. So in European countries and other countries of the world, uh, at the tertiary level, a foreign language does not feature as a compulsory subject. So we must understand that in this context, in Russia, things are not as bad. But if we want a foreign language to be declared as obligatory, we don't have then either some clearly set programs or the final test for universities. I always mention this, comparing it to the secondary education, because at schools there are such requirements. Therefore, in some way, um, it, uh, uh, it, uh, it is an incentive for the secondary school methodology of teaching foreign languages. They have uh, this incentive. But uh, for the universities, uh, we do have uh, this challenge because it is not a compulsory activity for us. So uh, the me methods and methodology at the university level is a very important subject. This is a challenge for us, for all of us who deal with teaching foreign languages and who deal with the applied use of foreign languages. We must all understand that if we borrow the European model of academic mobility, all this involves taking into account uh, the um, uh, relevant uh, requirements. Uh, this is the system of modules and uh, credits. And uh, the same demands uh, towards uh, the arranging foreign language teaching. If we don't elaborate uh, our program and the syllabus, taking into account uh, the European requirements, uh, then we won't be able uh, to provide uh, for the necessary level of academic mobility. I could go in depth uh, mentioning the problems, but that's not my task now. I want to share with you my views, my views on what uh, we can do to develop further the methodology of teaching foreign languages uh, in Russia. And here, individual universities uh, cannot change the situation. Only if we combine our efforts, uh, we can reach uh, some tangible result and uh, to have uh, um, uh, to, to have something tangible in our hands. So uh, the tendencies, uh, the new tendencies, the new trends. This is a subjective, uh, of course, presentation. But this is a plenary session, therefore I follow the rules of the plenary session. I will not impose ready-made decisions on you. I will try just to outline uh, the promising uh, tendencies uh, the way I see them, uh, as well as my colleagues. And I think the first uh, promising tendency is uh, connected with setting up uh, some kind of uh, an outline. Uh, and this is outline of a uniform uh, educational space for uh, Russian universities in the field of foreign language teaching. What specifically do I have in mind? First of all, I mean uh, the need to elaborate uh, some model programs, uh, syllabus 
work for uh, the language um, universities, non-language universities, and specialized universities. We have elaborated uh, such a model program for the non-language universities, and Larissa Kuzmina is present here. We work together at this program, but that's the only one, uh, and uh, we um, worked it out five years ago. It needs to be amended. I know that many uh, universities use it uh, as an example, and many other universities don't even know it exists. It's an open secret uh, that our Ministry of Education is in a coma and has been for many years uh, and uh, has ceased to, uh, to direct and to lead the development uh, of uh, universities and university science. And if nowadays uh, we want to create some kind of framework, single university space, we need models, uh, model programs like they exist for schools. There are model programs for, for elementary schools, for uh, secondary schools, and further on, those people who elaborate uh, the uh, uh, complexes, uh, educational complexes, uh, they know um, what to use as uh, their goal. Because in the sea of uh, uh, educational space nowadays, you need uh, some orientation. And if uh, there are no model programs, uh, then during the accreditation period, uh, we can hear criticism that uh, we are failing to fulfill the program. And in foreign languages, uh, there is a diversity of uh, rules and programs and uh, requirements. And nowadays, uh, there are no requirements at uh, the federal level towards uh, elaborating programs for universities. So as I said, we elaborated the first program for non-language universities. But it's not very applicable nowadays uh, because there are technical universities, there are uh, humanitarian universities, but not not linguistic ones. There are universities and departments uh, where they teach science, and uh, uh, the programs uh, should be elaborated uh, for some spe specific bachelor programs, not just for any bachelor programs. And here I would like uh, to draw your attention to the language universities. And uh, when we say that uh, the university methodology has been discriminated against, and this is partially, this is our fault, uh, because uh, teachers at secondary schools are more active, they're better organized, uh, they have some centers, but uh, language universities uh, have been discriminated uh, compared to non-language uh, uh, universities. Most research, most uh, uh, dissertations, most papers, and we heard it yesterday, <coughs> and uh, the, uh, that was all the experience and the results of the work of the non-language departments. We can imagine uh, that, uh, we can remember that at the time we were graduates uh, and there were no information technologies, no possibility to go to foreign universities, but nowadays uh, the foreign language uh, graduates uh, must show us examples, but they don't, they don't. <clears throat> and uh, the employers, the employers are not so eager uh, to recruit young graduates because they don't have a professional commitment, they don't have sufficient knowledge and competencies, and maybe the reason is that the programs at the universities are very old. They have not been amended for decades, and this is a serious problem for the university foreign language teaching. The <coughs> bachelor's programs, the master's programs, and you know the innovations for the postgraduate courses, the postgraduate course will just turn into the third level of professional education, and <clears throat> it will not have to result in, in, in presenting a thesis of your paper. So what is to be done now for the postgraduate course? And uh, another example, um, which I would like to give, I studied uh, the a program to prepare graduates in in the bridge building. So for them, uh, foreign language proficiency is expected to be at the uh, medium level. The same is true for medical specialists. Oh, no, for, for medical specialists, they're supposed to know a foreign language at a high professional level. For economists, a foreign language must be 
at uh, uh, the level of colloquial speech. So what is the colloquial speech level? What is medium level? What is high professional level? Who determined uh, all these definitions? How does it correspond to the existing international levels? Dear colleagues, the situation is really very serious. Moreover, those who declared a high professional level of the graduates, I looked at their plan and I saw only three terms of studying a foreign language. And they don't even provide for an entrance exam in a foreign language. So how can a foreign language department provide for a high professional level when there is no entrance placement, no test, and only three terms? of uh, teaching a foreign language. I think this is an important uh, element, an important detail. Well, so whether we elaborate such model problems, uh, programs or not, but the next step is absolutely uh, uh, indispensable. And uh, in every university, and when I say must, uh, I think uh, the model verb which I use uh, is important, not just should, but must. Because nowadays, every university creates standards of its own and confirms uh, its own standards and program. So the university must elaborate its own programs. And what kind of programs do we have nowadays at uh, universities, language and non-language universities? I emphasize the here uh, the key words. So they are not department programs. Uh, they are university programs. For us, it's different. We mostly have department programs, but do we have one program for the whole university? Do we have correlation between the various departments that we have at the university level? It was my pleasure yesterday to listen to uh, a presentation of our colleagues from the Petrozavodsk University, and they showed yesterday at the level of their projects that at their university they have the uniform educational space, because irrespective of the department, all the students are involved in the same kind of project, and then they present their projects with the participation of students of various departments and the requirements at this intermediate level are the same at the level of the whole university. Are there many universities in our country which can boast of the same approach? Here at MGMO, how many departments do you have? Six, eight. At the Moscow University, there are decades, uh, there are dozens of universities. And uh, when we give excellent in a foreign language in one department, we're not sure it's the same excellent in another department. So even within one department, uh, can we compare the results in various language groups? This is a very serious consideration. What I am driving at is uh, that these language teaching programs should be elaborated at the university level, not at the department level. And they should contain models. It's like uh, uh, cubes and uh, the possibility to create various uh, educational trajectories for students, uh, taking into account uh, the initial level, their requirements, uh, the specific nature of the department where they study. But at the same time, uh, the educational space uh, should be the same, should be uniform. In 1990, I uh, went to the United States for the first time. And there I understood that at the university, everybody was supposed to receive a certain number of credits in physical culture and physical training. Uh, but uh, uh, people could just take either general physical culture, physical training, or they could go to basketball, or they could go and practice American football, or they could practice ballet ballet dancing. So at the level of the uh, university level, do we provide such a choice to our students or there is no option? Uh, you, uh, as a student, have to go just uh, to one program. Then what about academic mobility and Bologna arrangements? How do we understand modules? And here I understand uh, that the modules can be at the level of A. That is, uh, uh, look at the first arrow which I'm showing here. So let us first decide what is the correlation for English for general purposes, for cultural uh, communication, for academic 
enemy communication for specific purposes. You are specialists, you know quite well uh, yourselves that uh, in many non-language departments, uh, Uh, the focus is on English and special purposes, but the students are not ready for this. They are not prepared for such specific. They don't know the terms in Russian, and we offer to them um, the text in English in foreign languages uh, on uh, um, uh, on specific purposes, on special on special texts. So, well, the students can not do not have even survival English at their disposal. They cannot socialize, but uh, they're supposed to know terms for specific purposes. And out, so I have mentioned three modules here. What is the system forming module from your point of view, including language and non-language departments? Academic communication, I think, because for a university, a foreign language is an instrument of continuing further education. And even at the level of academic communication, There can be modules, modules for general academic communication, and uh, uh, at the level of the master's program or postgraduate program, this communication will be different. And yesterday's presentation on how to write an academic article is not necessary at the level of the bachelor's program, but uh, all this information about how to write an article, academic uh, uh, article, should be included. Therefore, academic communication nowadays overshadows cultural communication and even professional communication. So how do we bring these modules together? And these modules in academic communication, where do we find them? How can students choose them depending on their requirement and maybe depending on their ambition? And for them to be able to choose, we must be able to offer them something. And the question is, what can we offer them now at present? I think we can offer something, but it's quite a different story that the new tendencies have not been exhausted and we can offer much more than we have at present and that's food for thought. And when we elaborate a module, it is very important, and we heard it yesterday in questions and answers, the fact that for every module, what is important is for ourselves to decide the minimum and the optimal level. And any, and any module at any level should have the principles of mini and uh, minimum and maximum. So where is the maximum that ensures a satisfactory mark? And where is the level which will make sure that you will get a good or excellent mark? And we should know about it ourselves and provide our students with information uh, about it at the very first lesson. And before you decide that you need this module, you must look at the requirements at the end uh, of the module uh, so that you would be able to pass it uh, at the minimum level or get a good or excellent mark. And the transparency of the requirements is something that we need and something that exists at school now. What all the authors of manuals build their manuals on. And we sometimes put the cart before the horse. Sometimes we create uh, manuals uh, on an English course, but we don't quite understand what the ultimate goals are and what the landmarks are. And we should do this for every module, for every uh, module dealing with a specific topic and so on. Another problem zone is uh, for any language course in a language uh, university or non-language university, for bachelor's uh, degree students, for master's degree students, or postgraduate students, uh, is the uh, amount of hours that has to be spent. Not only contact hours, but also the time that uh, have to be spent in order to um, to pass. Uh, and usual, uh, usually that includes the contact hours and uh, the same amount for uh, individual work. 
but we don't usually have it uh, specified. Uh, there are no provisions provide, uh, well, stipulating this. And today, everything actually must be made clear. Well, the time a student spends uh, in the classroom and the um, work he does on an individual basis at home. And this individual work should be monitored and managed. We should uh, provide some directions, some guidelines for this. Uh, and very often when a student gets to um, the classroom, uh, well, he says, oh, I haven't done anything. We are unable to monitor it. And I would like to stress that every language course should be more um, monitored and it can be done with the uh, communicative, uh, with, the mass, uh, with the use of computer technologies uh, or without them. And we should use all the methods of communication that can be provided now. And you should always remember that both the technical, technological means are necessary and the non technological means. You can either have uh, the homework on printed paper or in a notebook, or uh, you can require that it should be sent by email. Uh, something should be uh, done through the uh, administrative requirements. Our students are very often required to start uh, working in their professional sphere, and we must be able to take everything into account. And so far, we are unable to do that. Many uh, needs are not taken account of. And a transparent system of uh, monitoring a student's work is very important. Um, once I define for every student in every module, at every level, uh, the requirements at the end of the period of study, everything becomes clear. When Yelena Yastribova spoke yesterday, what I liked very uh, much was uh, when she asked what is the main source of information and whether innovation can be introduced from top to bottom. Uh, before we learn or until we learn uh, that the uh, well uh, until we learn how to make the department to explain what our intermediary requirements are we won't be able to um, use it in um, innovating the content and the form of our information and the role of administrations, uh, administrators is very important. And teachers can influence the administration, but only while it is being discussed. We are discussing something at the meeting of the department, at the meeting of the scientific council. And once it is adopted, it's a must. And in order to ensure that it is all uh, abided by, it should be monitored. And there should be not only interaction between the student and the teacher, but also the administration should play a role in monitoring it. Let's go further. The same thing, why do I stress it um, time and again? Uh, control and uh, assessment. Uh, well, final control and assessment. Well, we have some ideas on how to control the process. We have uh, decided, for example, that a student can uh, provide a, a graduation paper in a foreign language, but how will you assess it? Uh, show me a system of assessment. There is some uh, holistic assessment, but you cannot uh, explain everything uh, to the student on the basis of what criteria you do it. And unfortunately, uh, the, uh, the, the requirements are not clear. Well, in school, once some uh, ideas have been introduced, well, teachers, 
uh, had to start understanding, to start exploring these ideas, these uh, this new territory. But those concepts of assessment have been introduced. At the uh, university, we so far don't have such a unified system. We have some regs, so to speak, uh, when uh, the uh, university has uh, many systems, departments may have many systems, and even individual teachers may have some personal approach. So here, what is uh, important is uh, uh, to have an institutional system of intermediary and final control and assessment. Until we do that, there cannot be any uh, satisfactory and efficient management of uh, the educational system. So control actually dictates the vector of innovation in uh, the educational system. Uh, creation of the system of supplemental language uh, education and uh, professional education uh, is another uh, well, thing that we uh, are to do now. And usually, the minimal number of hours uh, to st uh, study a language uh, well, um, is usually provided. And the administration usually tries to squeeze a course into the minimum number of languages, but they want uh, a high professional level to be ensured. Uh, could you answer uh, my question? Do we have a competitive system uh, in our universities of uh, additional language education? Yesterday, I liked very much the presentation made by uh, our Indian colleague. I don't don't see her now, but she had a, a report on how to deal with students who have uh, who are uh, learning uh, at a slow pace. Uh, we usually orient our activities uh, to the stronger students. But if a student studied German uh, at school, but we uh, only teach English uh, at the university, and the student becomes a fairly uh, slow learner because he has to begin from scratch, and we should give him some supplementary uh, courses, maybe he will have to pay for uh, this course uh, a little, but we must make it all sensible. And if a student is ready and willing to pay, maybe we shall give him some benefits later. Maybe we shall send him to um, a foreign uh, language training in the language of the country. We must stimulate the student uh, to take part in this system of uh, additional professional and language education. And we, uh, we should look at foreign language certificates, very often our universities refuse to take into account foreign uh, certificates such as IELTS or others. But uh, on the one hand, it may be correct. But on the other hand, why not use them as an entrance exam uh, or take it from a different angle? Uh, maybe we should help students to prepare for such an exam and we don't have to do it in our uh, contact hours, uh, in the uh, time which is allotted for our curriculum. But module courses can be provided. They can be offered at different levels. They can be different in the topics they deal with. They can be also oriented to different models, paradigms of learning the language. Uh, everything can be different. Uh, it can be distant learning, it may be blended learning, or it may, may be uh, something else. But do we have such a system? Can our students choose from different possibilities? But we are responsible for the quality of the educational service. We cannot uh, be held responsible for the level of education because it is a bilateral, a mutual process. We teach and they learn. But we uh, have to take full responsibility for managing the level of the educational service provided. But of course, we should be 
uh, oriented uh, towards uh, the uh, person who is learning. And we should not only think about what he needs today, but we should be thinking about what he will need tomorrow. So I think this is a very promising development of uh, language education. Now, when I'm teaching at the uh, higher school of economics, what is the problem? Not only students want some supplemental courses uh, in the language and in their profession. Even uh, members of the faculty want uh, such uh, supplementary courses because if a you know, professor can pro uh, give lectures in a foreign language, uh, he has different career prospects. Uh, well, and if you want to give such uh, courses um, well to them, well, that will be very important for those people. So this supplementary education uh, is very important. And uh, well, this should be done. It is similar to other projects that we should undertake, but uh, they have a lot in common. So the uh, innovation of the system uh, for uh, well, professional uh, for a professional career. Well, uh, we usually speak about um, publications when people are uh, writing uh, scientific scholarly articles, and uh, the uh, uh, the journals in which they are published are different in uh, the status. Some are taken by the. Uh, well, we are speaking now about the quotation indices and uh, in the Hirsch, Hirsch index there's one uh, well, system of uh, well, publications, but there are only two magazines uh, which really uh, carry weight with the scientific Scorpio science. Uh, which only uh, have the weight. So if uh, we all queue for uh, publishing our articles there, how long will it take for us to publish something? Why should we not take into account uh, the manuals that people prepare? Why only think of scientific publications? And uh, we should not wait until the um, ministry or somebody else uh, saves us from these uh, problems, from these difficulties. Let us unite, we teachers, we members of the faculty, let us help them in how to improve this system of, professional, uh, of a professional career. Uh, we usually um, are told by our ministry that we should follow the Western uh, models, uh, but uh, why don't we create systems which are better suited to our purposes, better suited to our purposes? We have uh, a slightly different system, and uh, in order to be able to um, have the changes that we need, there should be both movement from top to bottom and from bottom to top. And we should be using the national associations and their relations with the ministry, and uh, we should make them uh, do uh, what we need.